flow sensors and the proper selection of flow sensors in industry. Experts claim that over 75% of the flow meters installed in industry are not performing satisfactorily and improper selection accounts for 90% of these problems. Here is an example problem. Wyoming is known for its natural gas reserves. In order to supply the necessary amount of gas to a specific area of the state, the flow rate of gas must be maintained at 60 gallons per minute at the ambient temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Since it is important to supply a consistent amount of gas, a proper flow meter must be selected that provides accurate measurements. In order to select a proper flow sensor, let's look at some selection criteria. First, identify the fluid that is being transported. Then, identify some properties of the fluid. Is it viscous, clean, or a slurry? Is it electrically conductive? And what is the fluid's density? Also, determine the flow rate and pipe size needed for transport. What will be the operating temperature and pressure of the system? And is the control part of a process or finished product? Additionally, accuracy, range, linearity, repeatability, and piping requirements should also be considered. Looking to the sample problem, we can determine that the fluid identity is a natural gas, it is clean, and it is not electrically conductive. The fluid density is approximately 0.717 kilograms per meter cubed. The flow rate is 60 gallons per minute. The pipe size is large, and the operating temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The maximum operating pressure is 1440 PSI gauge, and we are dealing with the finished product. The proper selection of a flow sensor must start by considering each type. The specific properties of differential flow sensors make them a good choice for the measurement of the flow. Rotometers are not appropriate for this process because of the small cross-sectional area required for measurement. Turbine meters are expensive and require repeated lubrication that would be difficult to maintain. Propeller meters are typically used for water flow. The use of a Coriolis meter would result in a large pressure drop and be very expensive. With vortex meters, the Reynolds number is especially limiting with gas flow. Ultrasonic meters require particulates or bubbles in fluid flow that do not exist in this process. For magnetic flow meters, the liquid must be conductive and natural gas is not. Gear meters are able to handle gas, but not in the large quantities required by this process. Because the composition of natural gas varies slightly, a thermal dispersion meter would not be able to be calibrated. Therefore, a differential pressure flow sensor should be selected. Both the orifice plate and venturi flow meters allow for large pipe size and large flow rates, so both would be good options. Specifically, the orifice plate flow meter has low startup and operational cost, but there is a significant pressure drop, which results in lost energy. Due to the large scale of the system, this energy loss would be rather significant over time. It is pictured as the top figure. The Venturi flow meter has a high startup cost, but a reduced operational cost. In addition, it recovers 80 to 90 percent of the energy lost after the initial pressure drop. It is pictured as the bottom figure. So, the Venturi flow meter would be the best choice.